Last week, I ranked the top 210 science fiction books using my enjoyment as one of the criteria. I'm not sure who's qualified to rank books based on the quality of the literature, but that doesn't stop us from trying. Hi, I'm Michael Levers, and this is Fit to be Read. <music> No, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a legitimate judge of a book's quality. Instead, I'm borrowing from some responses from Facebook's Science Fiction Book Club and a post that posed the question, what do you consider the greatest works of literature in the science fiction genre? This book club is a very active group, and having participated in it for the last few years, it's clear that many in the group have read tons of science fiction and have a great passion for the genre. The group was established by John Grayshaw through the Middleburg Library. Grayshaw has built a large community of more than 10,000 science fiction lovers. This particular post generated hundreds of responses, and now I'm going to sift through them with the primary aim of being able to present more science fiction book recommendations for you. With all caveats and disclaimers about judging literary quality out of the way, let's have some fun with this. As you might expect, a lot of answers didn't just name books, but instead started with anything by. The authors that most often came up are probably not surprises. Anything by Heinlein, anything by Asimov, Vonnegut, Zelazny, Le Guin, Bradbury, Wyndham, Sheckley, Pinchon, Stevenson, Cornwader Smith, Philip K. Dick, uh, Gene Wolfe, Ian M. Banks. Now to the books. I won't list them all, but here's 10 random ones that come up more than once and that also made an appearance on my top 210 list. If you watched my top 210 science fiction books episode, you were treated to an incredible presentation of this book, Player of Games, by my buddy Moid from the Media Death Cult. The Culture series by Ian M. Banks, this series came up a few times, and I'm talking about it today because I don't think it gets as much exposure as the books that were mentioned the most. If you're keeping score, those books that were mentioned the most in the thread were Foundation, iRobot, Hyperion, Dune, Book of the New Sun, The Dispossessed, The Left Hand of Darkness, More Than Human, and The Martian Chronicles. The culture refers to humanoid aliens who are uber-advanced, far beyond the Earth, humanity, the rest of the galaxy. The culture society is presented as a utopia, and much of the series includes a focus on their meddling in or being pulled into or confronted with the goings-on of other much less advanced worlds and people. Each book in the series is very different, and for that reason, I'm keeping the summary as broad as possible. I recommend the series for anyone who loves science fiction because of the large scope and scale of authors imagining the future and the stretches of the universe. I recommend the series for those who want to read the best that the genre has to offer when it comes to artificial intelligence themes and considerations and conflicts surrounding the idea of what is or is not utopian or ideal. Noah at Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse presented Theodore Sturgeon's More Than Human on my top 210 episode. I was surprised and not surprised that this was one of the most mentioned books on the book club thread. This is a fantastic read from a brilliant author. Sturgeon wrote this in 1953. It's a strange, in a good way, story about six people with interesting powers who mesh, or rather blesh, meshing and blending together, creating one being. Despite being much more than 50 years old, it's still a great read today. The prose is rich and poetic and full of substance. The reader I'd recommend this for are, of course, those with an interest in somewhat under-the-radar classic science fiction books and those whose curiosity is piqued by science fiction that feature things like telepathy, group consciousness, and leans heavily into other psychological themes. Ursula Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness and The Dispossessed both came up multiple times on the thread. Check out Nebula Award-winning author Elia Dawn Johnson's comments about The Dispossessed on the Top 210 video. Le Guin's prose is always solid, and her work, especially The Left Hand of Darkness, often gets labeled as literary science fiction or science fiction that transcends the boundaries of just science fiction. In Left Hand of Darkness, Genli I is an envoy for this confederacy of planets, and he's traveling now to Gethin. This planet's also known as Winter because the terrain is this icy and horrid. So he's there and he's meeting with like sort of the powers that be, and there's definitely some like political maneuvering and things like that going on, which is really interesting in the beginning. But the heart of the story is the butting of heads, the conflict, the distrust 
between Genley and one of the main political players, Theram Estrovin, and eventually their relationship has to take twists and turns because they're on this trek across this horrible terrain on this planet, and it's really fascinating. I recommend this for its strong prose and for the captivating trek and relationship that develops among two beings who are, on the surface, very alien to one another. The Book of the New Sun being popular on this list should not surprise anybody. Wolf's genius is well celebrated in science fiction circles. I'll give you the broad why on why I think it's so iconic and beloved. For the more nitty gritty or plot summary, I'll direct you to the full review of Shadow of the Torture, which is book one and that's on my channel. Or again, back to the top 210 video where you can hear Brian Lee Durfee celebrating it. In the science fiction book club, somebody recently asked me why Book of the New Sun was so popular. Responding with my phone's little keyboard, I gave the briefest answer I could. It's the scope, ideas, world building is giant, fascinating, and amazingly crafted. The characters have multiple layers, especially the unreliable narrator main character, Severian, a very complex and multidimensional character. There is great mystery, suspense, and reveals. The prose is vivid and fully pulls you into the world that Wolf creates, even if you can't recognize or see the world as Severian is seeing it. Dahlgren by Samuel R. Delaney, published in 1975, the year of our host, that's when I was born. Dahlgren belongs on this list for sure. What an undertaking by Delaney. Everything Delaney writes is filled with symbolism and metaphor. Like other favorites of mine by Delaney, Babel 17 and Empire Star, Dahlgren is unusual, surreal, and filled with layers of meaning. Very strange things happen in a mysterious, fictional Midwestern city. This city in the aftermath of some significant event is isolated from the rest of the world. The main character is the kid. He's a curious protagonist to say the least. He's purposely, I believe, written with a lot of ambiguity about what reality is and how he experiences the world. Delaney is a brilliant author with a style all his own. The book is odd and you can flip it open to the center or the end of the book and that might actually be the beginning. It's more brilliant than confusing, but it is both. You can see Peter Watts, author of Blindsight and Echopraxia, on my top 210 video, sharing his thoughts about this Delaney classic. Frank Herbert's Dune is such an achievement, and it's another title that was obviously going to be one of the most mentioned books on the thread. Dune alone is a true literary accomplishment, but it's really when you look at the full body of work of that series that Herbert's genius is truly recognized. Also obvious, Dune landed high on my top 210 list, and I also had some friends talk about the great sequels. You can find Johanna, Cam, and Michael K. Vaughn sharing their thoughts on some of those sequels. Dune is set on the desert planet of Arrakis. The Emperor appoints Duke Leto Atreides to run the joint. It's a sweet gig, coveted because of its main export, the spice, melange. This wonder drug, among other things, can imbue the consumer with prescience and efficacy at navigating faster than light speed travel. The catch is that Leto has a target on his back because his popularity doesn't sit well with the Emperor, and if that wasn't enough, the big baddie of the book, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, wants stewardship of the planet and control of the spice to stay in his family. So yeah, lots of politics. The heart of the story, though, is Leto's son, Paul. Paul might just be the one that the legends spoke of, the Lazan al-Gaib or Muad'Dib, Will he survive the desert and its giant sandworms? Will he unite the sand-dwelling blue-eyed native Fremen and convince them to follow him? And that's all just in book one. The most prolific answer on the list was Dan Simmons' 1989 novel, Hyperion. Hyperion has such broad appeal and it makes sense that it finds fans among picky classic science fiction readers, as well as those more into a more modern style. That, and it's just a heck of a book. In Hyperion, seven pilgrims travel to the distant planet Hyperion to visit mysterious time tombs that are surrounded by an entropy field and moving backward in time. Each pilgrim has a connection to the metallic blade-covered creature that they will encounter there, the Shrike. Simmons presents cyberpunk elements, space opera, horror, and war, and it all blends together seamlessly. Hyperion strikes a perfect balance between action, philosophy, character development, and plot. I'll have to do a part two, three, and four of this video because so many books were listed and all are great recommendations. The last book that I'm recommending today is Mary Shelley's classic, Frankenstein. 
This is one of the truly great science fiction classics. Victor Frankenstein, researching and studying science, does the unthinkable when he's able to assemble previously dead human tissue and body parts and bring to life a freakish humanoid creation. He is ashamed and repulsed by his creation and certainly doesn't hide it. His disgust, that is. The creation is ignorant of the world and without anyone to guide him, searches for meaning and suffers emotionally as he recognizes his inability to fit into this world. The bottom line is he just wants to be loved and accepted. Absent that, what's he got to do? He's got to get revenge on Frankenstein. Frankenstein is the earliest and most profound work of science fiction, masterfully using the non-human as a means to examine humanity. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Levers, and this is Fit to be Read.